Hey you going guys, Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. Today we're going to be making some upgraded bearing mounts so we can use our facing head for our WS2 line borer. This is the facing head that I bought with the machine. It's very expensive for what it is and it hasn't been used nearly enough. But the reason for that is it's just far too big to fit inside the original bearing mounts that came with the line borer. Once the bearing mount is actually attached to the job, there's not a great deal of room in front of it in order to put a facing head. You've only really got enough room to get your hand in there and adjust the tool. We have tried a few different methods in order to expand the mounts with longer bolts it causes rigidity issues the machine just starts to move around on the job and you get an inaccurate cut so there are certain configurations you can set up a line borer where the facing head is flawless if I'm line boring an excavator bucket and the inside of the ears need to be faced and cleaned up the facing head will fit in there without a drama because there are no bearing blocks interfering with it but on a lot of my jobs I need to face the external side of the jobs and you just cannot get the facing head in there in order Order to face them so you have to use other methods something simple that I have been doing is I've been using the standard tool holder and I will just basically step cut the face back so it's true that works but it's not a solution it is very very hard on the tooling and it's just not gonna work long term for me this is the standard bearing mount that comes with the WS2 you have the bearings on the inside that are to support the bar you have the fitting on the back side of the mount that the machine slips onto and then you have your blocks that get bolted onto the mount in order to be welded onto a job. So there are a few different things you can do with the mount. So you can double up the blocks to actually extend each leg so you've got a larger diameter. You've also got longer ones that will extend its diameter, but it still won't allow you to fit the facing head in there. In that setup there, you would need bolts at least 75 mil or three inches longer in order to support the facing head. And we still haven't got a tool in there yet, but that's where the rigidity issues come in. Because you've got such a long bolt hanging out, everything starts to move. It's not ideal situations for the work I do. So what we're making today is going to replace the existing mounts that came with the Sir Mechanica machine. So we're gonna be making four of these mounts today. There was four mounts that came with the machine standard and I do end up using all four of them on a lot of my jobs. What we've got here now, we've got all the bits and pieces we're going to need to make our bearing blocks. So we've got four plates we got from our local metal supplier. They are a 20 mil high tensile plate. They cut them based on the drawing I supplied them. We have our piece of 100 by 75 mil hollow bar which will be where the bearings live and the machine clips onto and we've got a piece of 40 mil centerless ground bar that we'll be using for the extensions to go from the plates onto the job we also have 16 brand new bearings and four brand new snap rings to hold the bearings in the housings so we've got a little bit of work to do to these we've got some milling we've got some lathe work and we've got some welding but the first thing I'm going to get onto, I'm going to get onto cutting the 100mm hollow bar into the lengths I need for the bearing mounts. So we've got our four pieces of material cut. What I need to do now, I need to face both ends and then I need the machine on a weld prep so I can then weld them onto our plates.
Perfect. One down. Righto guys, so we've got all those prepped. Now what I need to do, I need to go grab the plates. I need to get them set up in the lathe. Before we get the plates set up, I just want to go around the edges and deburr all those. So I've got this nifty little cutter I got off eBay and it is used for chamfering the edges of plates. So we're going to go and do that now. If you're wondering about these little chamfering tools, these things are really handy. I bought this off eBay for I think 39 Australian dollars. It's just really good for beveling little jobs. They are height adjustable so you can cut a very shallow bevel or a very deep bevel. The inserts are changeable so they are just a little triangular insert. Value for money, they're a good thing. They just make an absolute mess and they sound terrible. Got those plates prepped up, cut all the corners off those, they look really good. So now that they're all done, we're going to take them back over to the lathe and get our bearing mounts tacked onto them. Now that they're all tacked together, we can take them over to the rotator and we can weld them up.
Righto, so those are welded. While they're cooling down, we're going to get stuck into machining the standoffs. It's gonna be some sort of joke. It's just killing the drill. That's not even drilling. I'm having a lot of issues with this piece of material. It is not it is not behaving like a standard piece would. I've had to change all the parameters of cutting speeds, feed speeds. This is killing drills. It's not chipping correctly. It's it's just really misbehaving. So instead of fighting with this piece of material and wasting any more time on it, I do have another piece of 40 mil chrome bar that I've brought in for my own work that will be more than suitable for what I'm trying to do. So we'll put this piece of 4140 to the side and try and keep going with this. So I'm going to change out from the SNMG neutral holder. I'm going to go back to a WNMG just to avoid any other issues. I really did want to have a 45 degree shoulder in there, but it's not going to work out. So I'm just going to leave it a 90 degree shoulder, break the edges, it'll do the same job. So the first thing I need to do, I need to face the end of the bar. Then I'm going to use a center drill to put a center in the end so I can then support that with the live center. Then I can turn the OD down to size. Now I'm going to use a 12 mil drill. I'm going to drill it halfway because I can't get coolant all the way down to the end of the drill. So rather than risk breaking one off, I'll drill it halfway. I will then part it off and I will get all the standoffs up to this stage.
Righto, so we've got the 12 standoffs all up to the same stage now. What I need to do is put them back in the machine, use the centre drill, re-centre them. I can then drill the hole all the way through, chamfer off the sharp edges, and then I can tap the M14 thread through the middle of them. Right, so now that all those are done, we can get back onto machining the mounts. I need to reduce the OD on where the machine actually fits onto. So at the moment it's 100 mil, I need to reduce that to 90. I then need to bore it out to accept the bearings and then cut in a snap ring groove.
So now we're going to bore out the ID. We need to take it from 70 mil out to 80 mil to suit the bearings. Now I'm going to cut a 2.5mm wide snap ring groove using our threading tool holder with a snap ring and grooving insert. So we're going to use our neutral s &MG insert to machine down the weld just a little bit to clean it up. That'll help remove any sharp edges and just make it a little bit more presentable. I don't want to remove it entirely because that is what's holding the hollow bar onto that piece of plate.
Right, so I've got all the four bearing mounts up to the same stage. What I need to do is change the jaws in the chuck so I can now grab on the outside of the bearing mount where the line borer would go. I'm going to use some aluminium flashing. I use this for protecting chrome rod when I'm building cylinder rods. It's the perfect sacrificial material so I don't damage the surface of the area I've just machined. I can now face the back side of the bearing mount and while I'm here I'm also going to bore the ID of the plate to get it running parallel with the surfaces on the inside that I've already machined. Right, so all the lathe work is now finished. What I need to do now is take them over to the milling machine. I need to open up that plasma cut slot to suit a 14 mil bolt. So we'll take them over the mill and get them set up.
Righto guys, so we've got our first bearing mount set up in our milling machine. I will be using our super indexer to hold that and orientate it around so I can cut these three slots equally. I have got a pull bolt going down through the job, through the super indexer into the table just to add a little bit of extra support there because I am hanging onto that by the bottom of the mount. So I need to mill the slots out from a 12 mil to a 14 mil. I am using a 12 mil end mill. So I'll just go in, move to the left of mill, cut it, move to the right of mill, cut it. I'll end up with a 14 mil slot. Righto guys, so we've got our four mounts completed and our 12 standoffs completed. I won't be putting the bearings in these at the moment because I am going to send all these parts out to be nitride hardened. Nitride hardening gives it a nice tough surface finish but doesn't dimensionally change the overall size of anything. That's a couple of week process. So once that's done, I can fit the bearings and the snap rings. But we can still assemble one just to give you a bit of an idea on what they're going to look like. So this here would be the standard configuration using our standoffs and a couple of bolts. With the 14mm slots, I'm able to slide the standoffs in or out to increase or decrease the diameter of the bearing mount.
Not only can we slide the standoffs all the way out to increase the diameter, we designed the mounts in such a way where we could utilize the standard extension blocks that came with the Sir Mechanica machine. So you've got a small one, a medium, and then a large one. We'll set up one of the mounts with the medium sized blocks to show you what diameter that can reach. So that's the medium blocks, but if I put on the longer blocks, it'll actually give us another 200 mil in diameter that we could then attach the bearing block to. These Sir Mechanica extension blocks were actually designed so you can attach them to each other and make them a lot longer. And now our very expensive facing head can now fit within the mount and be used for what it was designed for. These mounts are going to replace the original ones that came with the Sir Mechanica machine because these are going to be a lot more rigid for me to use on all the work that I do. Righto, so someone's going to ask what did it cost to make all these bearing mounts. So in the materials there was about $500. That was including the plate, the hollow bar, the round bar, the bolts, the bearings and the snap rings. And it was about four and a half hours of work. So all all in all, that's pretty cheap for what these are going to allow me to achieve with my line boring setups now. There's probably 10 different ways you could have made these. I made them this way because this is how it's going to work best for me. So that is 99% of the work that I need to do now completed. I will need to put them together after they get back from night riding. So you'll just have to wait and see them in an upcoming video. Thanks for watching. Are you ready? My hat on straight. <laughs> yep. What we've got here now is I have all the parts that I have. Fuck. The, the, oh, fuck me. <sighs> fuck. English, dude. English. Wait, what? <laughs> <clears throat> right, so with the Sir Mechanic, oh, <laughs> you just get an audio or face as well. <laughs> You're right. Right. <laughs> Stop laughing. You good? Mm. <laughs> I've got stuff to make the thing. <laughs> right, so there are certain. Right, so oh, now that. Can that... you try not to knock that? Silly. Okay. What a silly door. I made that door. It's a great door. Right, guys, so all. Ready? Shut up. Have you had any trains? I haven't. Must be doing. Don't fucking start with the train <laughs> thing, they'll start coming. Get fucked. Why aren't you fucking chipping? <gasps> My God! It's just really misbehaving, so I don't know what origin of country this came from, but it is just shit. I'm gonna go all the way down the bottom, touch it, and then come back here. I made them this way because this is how it's going to work best for me and it's it's my money, my workshop, my way. So that's why I made them like that. Thank <laughs> you.